I want to ask you um, three quick um, questions. Who is leading us? What is it they believe? And where are they leading us? Where are they taking us? What are they building exactly? See if you can answer that here in the next few minutes, because I'm going to show you what I was talking about in that morning meeting. I'm going to introduce you to a man who is strangely in our own government. But we have to start here. We have to start with attitude. Attitude, what you believe. Um, that is so important when it comes to leadership. Your attitude, what you believe. All parents know that you can preach to your kids till you're blue in the face, but they're going to learn the most by watching you and the way you behave. I am the man I am because of my father. I learned how he treated customers when I was watching him wait on customers in his apron at the bakery. I remember how he treated police officers when he was pulled over um, one late night coming home from work. I remember that, and that's where I got it. Not because he preached to me. You can tell people, be kind, be kind, be kind. But if you're mean and harsh to people, that's exactly what they'll be. That's why Jesus, the whole Jesus thing worked. He lived it. It's the same principle that applies whether you are just you or uh, Jesus or the President of the United States, which I think has been elevated now just above Jesus. The President of the United States can preach and talk and give speech after speech about people coming together. But if he's not living that, if that's not his attitude, if that's not what is in him, it doesn't work. In fact, it all comes apart. That's why words become meaningless. So what is the president doing to bring us together? Well, we have seen over and over again, he injects himself into the most divisive stories. But at the same time, when he injects himself on the things that speak to him, he is silent on other divisive stories where there's a real chance to unite people. For instance, the rodeo clown. If you are, if you are actually paying any attention at all and you see this stupid rodeo clown and you're the president of the United States, do you say, this is important, this is incredibly trivial and meaningless. The White House should have responded to any question about the rodeo clown, it's a rodeo clown. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. But here is how the White House addressed it. Watch. Um, I can tell you as a uh, native Missourian, it's certainly not one of the finer moments uh, for our state and not the way that I like to see our state uh, mentioned in the news. Okay. So he answers the question. I put this guy and this question because I want to show you. It's a stupid rodeo clown. They're up to speed on the rodeo clown. Quick to condemn it instead of just dismissing it, which would have quelled the fires. Now, let me take you to the same guy, different story, just asked for a comment about the brutal murder of a 23-year-old Australian baseball player, Chris Lane. The story has sparked national outrage, but listen to the same guy being asked by a reporter about this story. Watch. Do you have any reaction to the Christopher Lane case? Uh, I'm not familiar with it, actually. In uh, Oklahoma, this 22-year-old uh, Australian, mm -hmm. 22 or 23, I've seen different reports, um, a baseball player came from Australia, was targeted apparently by three African-American young men um, who the, the Australian was out on a jog, um, and these young men apparently told the police um, they were bored and they thought it would just be fun to kill him. Yeah. Uh, any reaction to that? Well, just that this sounds like a pretty tragic uh, case. I wouldn't want to get ahead of the, of the, ju of the legal process here. And mm. Okay, so he's aware of the rodeo clown, and we can list a hundred others, but he's not aware of this one, and he doesn't want to get ahead of the judicial process. Well, hang on, just a, a few short months ago, the president made a speech about the Zimmerman verdict, and, and, and not long after, passionately telling Americans that if he had a son, he'd look like Trayvon Martin. That case wasn't closed yet. That case had nothing to do with race, nothing. There wasn't even enough evidence to drag Zimmerman into court, but the president chose sides early on. The thugs who murdered Chris Lane in cold blood, two black teenagers and one white guy, want to be gangsters, okay? So now I'm watching my commander-in-chief, and I'm wondering, why doesn't he care about this case? Is he really for equal justice or his justice? Justice sometimes for the right people.
Is the president really concerned about racism as he claims he is? Or is he only concerned about racism sometimes with some people? The media says the murder was out of boredom. You just heard him say that. It had nothing to do with race. No, sorry. Thanks to the new media, we now know that at least one of the killers was racist. Let me show you his Twitter timeline. Does this sound racist? 90% of white people are nasty. Hashtag hate them. Don't we hear about hate crimes? How about the next one? It's funny how white people listen to Chief Keef or Meek Mill, but ain't, ain't ever seen white slang for cocaine, never seen a strap slang for a gun, never seen a bullet, hashtag lame. Or this one. I knocked out five woods since Zimmerman Court. Now I'd like to, i just like to ask what woods, what was it, five woods, what does that mean? Is this a golfing? No. This is again slang for white people. Woody Woodpecker. Woods. So he knocked out five white people since Zimmerman Court. And then he goes on with expletives. I don't know. Zimmerman was mentoring black teens. And while he may have been an overzealous wannabe cop, and I don't think he was necessarily a good guy, you have to, be, you have to understand that the fact is he went to the police station in defense of a black homeless man. He was mentoring black kids. He's not a racist. A wannabe cop went out of control, whatever, but not a racist. Yet the president chose to make that story about race. Why? And why no comment this time? Why no comment with all of the murders that are happening in Chicago? You can make your own decision, but here's the, here's the real question. What are his actions teaching people? Where is he leading us? What is he building? Well, he's building a society that says justice is not blind. Equal justice no longer exists. In fact, the Department of Justice should consider a name change. Maybe it should be the Department of Social Justice. And don't think that they would fight you on that one. As I said in the opening, that was from the morning meeting about 7 o'clock this morning. I we were talking, and, I, and I'm, I mean that. We were having a high-level meeting the other day, and somebody said, well, Glenn, we, we really could bring this to the Justice Department. And when I laughed out loud at that thought, I thought, how sad is this? That we were supposed to make progress. We we're supposed to, we are supposed to continue to move forward. We've gone back to I don't even know. Are we back we're at least back in the 60s. Are we back in the 50s? Because we're headed that way. It's just upside down. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. But I don't think there's a lot of people in Washington anymore. I, I think they either think they're God or they believe that vengeance is theirs. The Department of Justice can't even leave, live up to its own name anymore. So if you've got a problem, who do you go to? Well, maybe the president can explain. We cannot continue to rely only on our military in order to achieve the national security objectives that we've set. We've got to have a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded. This has been a point of controversy since he said it, um, and anybody brings it up, they're immediately painted as a um, conspiracy freak, but there's no way to explain that. What the hell does that even mean? A national security force just as strong as, as the military? What is that? Well, a lot of theories. But the DHS seems to be becoming that national police force. They are everywhere. They are everywhere. They have their cars everywhere. They are becoming your local police. Why? They're buying up bullets like crazy. Why? Well... Let me throw a really spooky log on this fire, just on the bullet part. Let me take you to a website called War on the Horizon. It was created, and I want to quote the website, it was created for the purpose of preparing black people worldwide for the unavoidable, inevitable clash with the white race. 
whites around the world are absolutely determined to exterminate African, notice it's, well, notice the way it's spelled, African people in all corners of the earth. As a result of this reality, WOH, that's the website, has dedicated our time and expertise to properly educating black people to prepare for racial warfare. Would you say this one is racist? Do you think this is a racist website? The man who runs this website calls himself the irritated genie. He says, quote, Warfare is imminent and in order for black people to survive the 21st century, we are going to have to kill a lot of whites, possibly more than our Christian hearts can count. Wow. Now, this website, who's running it? Well, um, he runs this in his spare time. The guy who runs this, his day job is with the Department of Homeland Security. This is the guy who helps procure all of the bullets for the Department of Homeland Security. The department that has been given the charge to keep us safe now claims they just could, they miss, somehow or another they miss the irritated genie, that's what he calls himself, the irritated genie's black supremacy during the job interview. Really? By the way, he had to ask them to start the website. They said yes. They claimed they didn't know what it was. Oh. Let me see if I have this right. They have this entire apparatus they can spy on Americans through the Internet. They, they can they, they could cull and save everything, yet somehow or another, they miss the whole war on the horizon, race war that's coming website. The irritated genie even has a LinkedIn page. DHS found none of that. Oh, you, you do got a website? That's good. We like computers. You're hired. Really? Now, ICE has responded to the news of the irritated genie's double life, which doesn't seem really quite secretive, saying, quote, Every ICE employee is held to the highest standard of professional and ethical conduct. Accusations of misconduct are investigated thoroughly, and if, if substantiated, appropriate, appropriate action is taken. Is that? I don't even know what the hell that means. I mean, we can see your standards are impeccable, but what does that mean? Are they firing him? Did they fire him? Did they? If it's substantiated, it's him. There are people that work at the DHS who say they are frightened of this guy. Does this make the DHS safer? Does this make you safer? Are you really safer because of the DHS and all the money they've spent? You feel safer at the airport? We've had the Fort Hood terrorist attack, the Boston Marathon terrorist attack, three, um, three other U.S. diplomats, the ambassador, murdered. Costs us $60 billion a year. Believe me, they're not just throwing money into the wind. They are spending that money. They are building something. I think they're building something just as big, just a, just a colossal weight of, waste of money. No, no, no. They're building um, something like a civilian national security force that's just as powerful, just as strong, just as well-funded as the U.S. military. Their words and actions, when they line up, are frightening. When the president's words start to line up with his actions, you get a breathtaking glimpse. He spoke flowingly during the Arab Spring, and his administration supported the Muslim Brotherhood vocally, and their actions met their words. And when that happens, they're rarely pro-America. His actions speak louder than his words. His actions and his words are still pro-Muslim uh, Muslim Brotherhood. But his words now have become more and more silent. But he keeps moving. His actions to move on Trayvon Martin met his words, I could have been Trayvon. But neither words nor his action met, meet the uh, sentiment the country uh, after the shooting in Oklahoma. None of them meet what he says he, he cares about real justice, but where, where, what? He didn't want to get involved in that one. As much as we say the government has a responsibility to protect, because that's what they claim now, we have a responsibility to protect, and they will lose, they'll move on lightning speed. You watch, they will move on Syria, but they will say nothing about the Coptic Christians. You notice 
Their responsibility to protect ends with the Muslim Brotherhood. It ends with radical revolutionaries. It ends unless you're a person of particular color or a particular category of people. I can't tell you any more information about this government and what it is turning into and convince anybody else. If you're not convinced yet, you're never going to be convinced. So let me just talk to those people who see any truth into what I have been saying. Forget about them. Your action, my actions, our actions as a group of people, our actions and our words must match at all times. Let us be for all classes of people. Let us be for all colors of people. Let us be for all people of faith or lack thereof. Let us judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin or anything else at all times. And realize that if we don't, America will quickly arrive at a dangerous destination because this administration is teaching by example and people are learning. I asked you, who is leading us at the beginning? Let me tell you, I think... I wrote this down right before we went on the air. A man who sides with the Muslim Brotherhood, who views white America much the same way as Jeremiah Wright does. The next question is, what is it they believe? Well, they believe that the collective is more important than the individual, and they should be in charge of the collective decision-making. And where is it they're leading us? God help us all, but if that's somebody you put, a, you put a communist in as your green jobs czar, and you've got this guy buying all the bullets for the Department of Homeland Security, I don't know, it sounds to me like you're taking us towards revolution. Coptic Christians right now are facing possible genocide at the hands of the Muslim Brotherhood and radical Islam, and the president is silent. Don't you dare be silent. Don't you dare be silent. Go to the website, go to Twitter, uh, go to your Twitter account, or go to my Twitter account, grab, um, um, grab the filter, get it on Facebook, grab the filter. It le that's the least you can do. It says, I, I am Coptic. Let us all speak out consistently. We cannot be silent. Even though he, he is silent, his message is loud and clear. Truth, equal justice, and the American way no longer exists in Washington.